Hi, my name is Jason Neidelman, and I'm a research scientist in the Rhone Lab at Gladstone Institutes. I had a degree in biochemistry and molecular biology at UC Santa Barbara, and then I did uh, quite a few years of work in industry at a company called Chiron, and I was working on vaccine development there. And um, at one point, my wife actually had seen a, a talk given by Warner Green about HIV, and she's also involved in HIV uh, as a case manager for people who have HIV and AIDS. And she had mentioned that the research looked very um, interesting and cutting edge. So uh, I was interested in, in having the experience of working in an academic lab. And so an opportunity presented itself where Warner had a um, job opening and I applied. And I was very impressed during the interview. And, and so I decided that I was definitely interested. And luckily, I got the job. And that was 20 years ago, and I've been here ever since. What I like about Gladstone is, of course, the research here is very top notch, and there's a lot of resources available to, and collaborations to uh, accomplish great things. And my, inter my interactions with the colleagues here is also very important. Uh, we have a lot of good discussions about how to do excellent, well-controlled experiments, and uh, there's a lot of feedback and um, involvement as a group of everyone. So um, it's very enjoyable to work with all of my colleagues and PIs. Up until the pandemic hit, my project has been to characterize the HIV latent reservoir in infected individuals. And the reason why we focus on that is though, although antiretroviral therapy has been very successful at suppressing virus in infected individuals, a problem is that if these individuals stop treatment, the virus rebounds, that is the virus is able to start replicating in these individuals again. And of course, when their viral load increases, that's a return of disease that could lead to AIDS. It affects their immune system. So the question is, what is the cause of that rebound in the virus? And a big part of it is that there's actually cells that are latently infected. So these cells are normally suppressed by antiretroviral therapy. And then if, again, if the, if the patient goes off of that therapy, the cells start to produce virus. So the question that we have is, what are the T cells that are, that are uh, latently infected? We're using a technology called CYTOF, and this allows us to look at what is a very complicated system. There's a lot of diverse types of T cells, and our goal is to, to characterize which of those T cells harbor the latent uh, virus. And so using that technology, we've had a lot of good insights that could be uh, used in the future for uh, cure of the disease and uh, different approaches to treatment. Once the pandemic hit, we realized that we could pivot into studying COVID infection as well using the same approach that we use for latency. I think the first thing to think about with regards to vaccines is that we've had vaccines around for quite a while, and they've actually increased our lifespan tremendously. Um, and they've also reduced the level of childhood deaths because a lot of uh, infections that previously had resulted in disease and death are now eradicated. So vaccines have a long track record of improving life expectancy and health. Another thing that's really important to understand about the COVID vaccine is that at this point, thinking about safety, over a billion people have been fully vaccinated. And so there's a lot of data actually about the safety of these vaccines. And although there are some instances where people have had severe reactions, it's a pretty rare occurrence. And for most people, it's the headache and the pain in the arm. And the benefit of having a vaccine is, 
as everyone knows, it's able to prevent infection. And even if you've been previously infected with the virus, it actually boosts your body's immunity so that if you become reinfected by some chance, the, the severity of your disease is going to be much less than it would be otherwise. And speaking about being reinfected, there's some people also that have breakthrough infections. Now, in that case, even though the virus is able to evade the antibody response after vaccination, you still have your T cell response. And our data showed that T cells are very important in decreasing the severity of disease. So you're still protected even if you have a breakthrough and you have some level of infection. Your disease severity is likely to be much less. My dad was a scientist, so there was a lot of opportunities for me to do little scientific projects. For instance, I had petri dishes where I touched my face or my hands to them and, and saw the slime molds that were very pretty grow out. Um, I did some experiments with chemistry sets and once in a while got myself into trouble with those, with reactions that I didn't expect. Um, I also um, had a lot of scientific books around, such as one of my favorites was the Scientific American's uh, the cell, which had a very large electron mic microscopy image of the nucleus of a cell. And I always thought, how could something so tiny be so well organized? And I still wonder at that. When I'm not working, I'm busy with my family and we've been doing a lot of traveling and it's been great even during the uh, Last year, we've been able to visit many of the state parks safely. Uh, we've been visiting all of the different trees, from sequoias to the giant redwoods. We've been also going to Yosemite during different times of the year and uh, having a great time going down to Joshua Tree as well. So we've been busy uh, exploring the state. Although he's not strictly a scientist, I think it'd be interesting to meet Socrates because I think he would straighten out my thinking and reasoning ability and that would be beneficial. Also, whenever I go to museums, I, I wonder who was the anonymous genius who figured out how to uh, create those artifacts. You see things like cutting stones that are, look very complicated and I know from flint napping videos that it actually takes quite a bit of effort to, to get an effective stone, or who figured out how to make iron into uh, weapons or um, cutting implements or vessels. So I think that there's also a lot of people throughout history that it'd be very interesting to know. Mm -hmm.